In the headlines, gunmen invade residence of Plateau Commissioner, abduct wife, daughter. Security presence boosts travelers' confidence on Abuja Kaduna Highway. Humanitarian crisis worsens in Niger State as IDPs troop to state capital. And on the foreign scene, Saudi Arabia has increased number of limit of Hajj pilgrims this year to 1 million, compared to only a few thousand local pilgrims over the past two years. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Now the news in full. Gunmen early Saturday invaded the residence of the Plateau Commissioner for Environment, Usman Bami, abducting his wife and daughter. Confirming the incident, spokesperson of the Plateau State Police Command, ASP Uba Gabriel, said men of the command were already on the trail of the abductors to ensure the safe rescue and release of the victims. Reports say it is unclear if the commissioner was at home when the armed gang stormed the house in Gindri community of Mungu local government area of the state. This is coming less than a week after the son of a serving commissioner was gunned down by bandits in Zamfara. Meanwhile, the Abuja Kaduna Highway is recording increased traffic as it is the only alternative route for passengers since the shutting down of train services. Terrorists on Monday, March 28th, attacked a Kaduna-bound train, killing eight and injuring many and abducting others. While Mediaba monitors movement along the highway and now reports. Right now, I'm standing at Vijana village along Kaduna-Abuja highway. Vijana village is one of the flashpoint area along the dangerous highway. But we can see today, Friday, a lot of travelers are applying the road, following the massive deployment of security agencies. Because right from Akilibu up to uh, Olam Farm area, up to uh, Sabangayan, we understand there was a massive security deployment. And also, I observed the presence of checkpoint in some of the strategic areas along the highway. I also saw helicopter surveillance, carrying out a surveillance along the highway to boost confidence to most of the motorists that apply in the route. Despite the public outcry yeah. on the insecurity, yeah. there's st still not no remedy uh, over the ass. Um, but do you have any special appeal? Because we also we understand that the, the, some kind of appeal, security the appeal. The appeal I have now, now the federal government have ordered for to Kano, mm -hmm. to Kano aircraft. Yeah. These peoples can be conquered within 24 hours. As far as the quench medicine have been a riot in Kano. Yeah. Uh, that is how I want. And still talking insecurity, the continued onslaught by bandits against farming communities in Niger state has displaced thousands of people who have relocated to other parts of the state, particularly Mina, the state capital. The relocation is to enable them to look for more secure places as their places of abode have become too volatile for human habitation. The report. In these communities that are predominantly agrarian, the situation has continued to worsen as more people troop into the city to seek refuge from rampaging bandits. While the state government and other stakeholders appear to be overwhelmed, affected communities continue to look up to the government to enable them return home. We want to go and dig home to find what to eat. We want government's assistance. Presently, the IDPs, mostly women and children, are staying in uncompleted buildings, while others are putting up at low-cost apartments in Meitumbi, Nkangwe, Boso, Meikunkunle, Nguan Kadara, among others, to make ends meet. Some of them have taken to mining gold. <laughs> What is disturbing is that we cannot access our farms. Before we used to go and return, but now we can no longer do so. Abdullahi Arena is one of the landlords accommodating some of the IDPs. Whatever God plans will come to pass, but we are appealing to government to assist us. At least I have few people I take care of here. Whatever assistant government can give us, let them give us so that the people 
can return to their homes. And now to judicial matters where Federal High Court in Abuja on Friday struck out eight of the 15 terrorism and felony charges proffered by the federal government against the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kainu. Justice Nyako, while ruling on a preliminary objection filed by the IPOB leader, strikes out the charges. Mardia Umar has details. While the trial was ongoing at the Federal High Court in Abuja, there were heavy security presence around the court premises. This is according to the new directive from the federal government that all terrorism-related offences is to henceforth be conducted in camera. Trial Justice Binti Nyako adjourned to rule on the application after she heard arguments from both Kanu's lawyer, Michael Zokobe, and the prosecution counsel, Tribal Labaran. Zokobe argued that his client was entitled to bail considering that he still enjoys the presumption of innocence under the 1999 Constitution as amended. Counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 and 15. Those are the ones that are remaining. The other ones were quashed. So we then proceeded to move our bail application that the defendant Mazi Namdi Kanu deserves to be granted bail. For the government's lawyer, Labaran urged the court to decline the bail request. An argument were preferred, and it was also in their argument that Namdi Kanu had never flouted any of the conditions of the bail. And we have argued vehemently, showing to the world, showing to the court, that he has actually flouted all the bail conditions. And that was the reason why the court has ordered for his, uh, uh, revoked his bail and ordered for his uh, arrest. Well, as it stands, the 18th of May 2022 has been set aside for the ruling of his bail application. And in the same month, on the 26th of May 2022, the continuation of his trial will continue, but at a venue that will be communicated at a later date. Martia Umar. Trust TV News, Abuja. And while that was going on, economic activities in the southeast were Friday crippled following a sit-at-home order by the pro Biafra agitators, IPOB. The order by the group was to draw support for the IPOB leader whose court case came up for hearing on the 8th of April 2022. A visit to two major streets within Oeredi, Imo State Capital, revealed that there was total compliance to the sit-at-home call by IPOB. People who on a normal day would have gone to their various places of work were seen hanging around their streets in a bid to honour the call. Some respondents who spoke to newsmen said they stayed at home for their safety while expressing bitterness over the continued detention of Namdi Khan. And youth in the South-South region have joined the leadership of the Nigeria Labour Congress in River State to vow not to support the presidential ambition of Governor Nyesom Wike. They said this is due to the governor's inability to address some issues concerning workers' welfare in the state. The report. The South-South Youth Initiative at a media conference in Port Harcourt said the current administration of Governor Nyesom Wike has only succeeded in sacrificing the welfare of the state on the altar of partisan politics without recourse to unemployment and economic degradation. National President of the Youth Group, Imiebe Savio Oscar, who read out their position during the media conference, threatened to oppose any event that runs contrary to the development of teeming youths and the generality of the state. We are urging the governor, His Excellency, Chief Yes of Mesa One Weekend, to put his presidential ambition on hold until he, we can fulfill the promises he made to reverse youth and workers seven years ago. The governor has, during his campaign, promised to create jobs, empower youth, pay pensions, scholarships, and gratuities, as well as bursary to students. But as we speak, none of the promises have been delivered or seen the light of the day. Charity, they say, begins at home. 
the youths while complaining that retirees had been left at the mercy of continuous protests for their right without any positive response from the government, threatened to occupy government house and protest if Governor Wike goes ahead with his presidential ambition without fulfilling their demands. Youth of South South Youth Initiative, SSYI, are joining our chapter in River State to say enough is enough. And we will no longer accept any event that runs contrary to the development of our dear dreaming youth and the generality of the state. So all this we have demanded in two months' time. All this, we are demanding the payment of gratuities. We are demanding for the immediate payment of pensions to pensioners. We are demanding 60,000 job opportunities, 60,000. The youth group, while demanding for 60,000 jobs for Rivers Youths, issued the government a two-month ultimatum to address all issues. You're watching Trust TV News Update. Coming up after the break, secrets of Jigawa edible fruit. This and more after the break. Do stay with us. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace.